recording and uh, once again um, good to see you all um warm welcome to the session um i have uh, prepared some slides and um have uh, like a, some idea what uh, to show you uh, you see the a logo which we have maybe not seen before this week is open education week a global event organized by open education global um an organization which tries to promote open education um, so education which is accessible to everyone independent formal requirements um so and i uh, if we have people joining uh, from this community that might well be the case um i put this link out um and the event out on the oe uh, week page um and you can uh, i post the link um here in the chat. And as I said, if you have questions, uh, interrupt me, um, stop me. Uh, otherwise, um, I think you understand everything. And um, um, but um, again, I can um, be flexible with the setup. I um, I'm just going to go quickly, just quickly through why we reflect in the first place and then uh, more hands on the, the technical side of things. What is a front end, back end? Uh, uh, what is WordPress? Are there other places? How do I connect my um, uh, site or reflection space or whatever you want to call it? And um, what is an RSS feed and why do I need to know and uh, who can access my page and all, all of this works. And I stay more on those things where you want me to, and I go further on if you think this is, we know all this. Um, so just quickly then, uh, why do we reflect in the first place? Um, uh, I think we want our students to be, and a lot of uh, ourselves maybe to be reflective practitioners, right? We, um, um, want to reflect how we teach um, we want our students maybe to be reflective practitioners when they go out and be um, doctors, uh, medical doctors or nurses or teachers themselves. Um, I guess a lot of us hope uh, for them to be reflective practitioners and stop and think what am I doing this in this way? Why am I doing this? Is there new evidence, how we could do things differently and um, and stop and think as, as the basics for learning um, and um, connecting um, theory and research to practice. And there's quite a lot of research about um, reflecting um, as a basis for for learning uh, in higher education, but also in other practices. And uh, the term of reflective practitioner, that's um, uh, termed, I think, 1983 by a colleague named Schoen, but um, the idea is uh, like brought forward by Dewey yeah. earlier. And, and this is- oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah, and um, don't forget to unmute yourself if you want to say something later. Um, but thanks for muting if you have background noise. So the idea, um, I mean, this is not a theoretical session here about why I'm reflecting. We we have some points on the ONL homepage as well on reflecting. And um, it's generally understood as pretty important for learning. Um, I don't know if you want to comment or agree or disagree on this. Um, so, um, this is a central part um, how we structure ONL uh, also and um, where we propose like a learning diary, right? Um, you interact with your um, PBL group uh, mates during this two week topic and um, you, you are introduced to some theory, um, but you are also um, a search for your own research article when you focused on a particular aspect of your scenario. And, um, and the idea is then for the learning diary to give you an opportunity, but also, um, yeah, a little push to stop after two week topic and uh, 
reflect for yourself individually what how did the process of the um, yeah thank you Alistair for the link to the individual collection space um, um what 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 did I experience or how does this model relate to my practice and like in a little dialogue there yeah, which you can have um, for yourself and with yourself and focus on stuff sometimes in the PBL work it can be that you that you maybe that your group decided on something to focus on which you're not 100% uh, interested in, or you uh, have something in mind which you really wanted to focus on, but you couldn't uh, convince your teammates to focus on this aspect. This is also an, an idea for the individual uh, individual reflections and to, and to use the space and um, uh, an opportunity to, to uh, Go deep on an aspect you are uh, self interested in. Is this um, clear so far, or um, nothing new? A lot of nodding. Yeah. Excellent. The reaction buttons are working, and I see some of you nodding. And it, it, um, all right. Then uh, the more technical side of things, maybe. <laughs> uh, this is maybe um, why some of you are. Uh, mainly here. Um, just quickly, um, <clears throat> I will mainly focus on WordPress, but uh, like the ONL homepage, your uh, the reflection spaces you can create here in the course on the platform. This is WordPress, right? Um, a hosted, um, self-hosted WordPress multi-site. Um, which uh, we host here at Karlstadt University, which you it's it's WordPress uh, for those of you who are um, not so familiar with WordPress, uh, maybe <clears throat> it's good to know that WordPress is used for a, a good third of all home pages on the internet are run with the help of WordPress. Um, if your students go out and work in a small business, for instance, very likely that that home that that company will use uh -huh. It's um, often used in at universities for uh, e-portfolios or reflection spaces. Um, we have uh, some colleagues here in the course um, from Copenhagen who have a site like this. Karlstad University has a site like this where we. Um, provide students, but also um, teachers a place where they can have a digital lab. It's it's open source, so it's free of charge. You can just download it and install it. And um, um, it's, it's yeah, very commonly used. And there's a huge user base uh, and ecosystem of uh, uh, companies who who create extra little tools and plugins and themes uh, for um, for WordPress and it's very versatile. It's not only uh, used in the library context or university context. It's used by multinational companies to run their web presences. So it's very powerful tool. There's a difference between going to WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Also good to know, um, there is a company behind um, WordPress, uh, um, but it's um, which uh, hosts WordPress.com, but there's a huge, huge community of uh, free based developers uh, and contributors who keep the code alive and contribute to it. And um, yeah, very, very powerful tool to extend with plugins. Here's a list. I show you a list, and this will be very important now um, for me to know what I should focus on. I show you a list of uh, terms, and maybe you can write in the chat uh, which of one you're not 100% familiar with. Okay. So if you find the, your way to the chat, here's a list of uh, word pairs, really, um, maybe. In RSS feed is not a word pair, but um, if you could write in a chat which you maybe could not explain to someone else what is meant with this right away or what the difference between the two are. <clears throat> yeah. 
saying none. Okay. Yes. RSS feed, um, excellent. Um, so if I front and back end, the category tag, post and page, clear for everyone, more or less. Good. Um, then apart from post or page, I will explain all of them, I guess because there's someone here in the room who, who <laughs> doesn't know them. And that's good uh, because this is exactly uh, what my setup for today was. Uh, Paige, can I have more than one post? Yes, excellent. Thank you for, thank you. And especially for, day, for today's session, right? There are no stupid questions, okay? Um, so just ask um, and we, uh, I try to explain and uh, explain it. Then I guess I um, stop sharing my PowerPoint slides and go over to um, to um, to WordPress to show you the, what the front end and what the back end is, for instance. Um, and front end, <laughs> you um, have all seen because the front end is um, front end of a WordPress page is what you see, right? This is what the what we as a user see, the front end. And there's the, there's the front side and the back side. And on the back side, you um, uh, the back end, uh, I show you what the back end um, could look like. Um, let me just go through my tabs. Yeah, this is, um, if you see the URL here, this is the, also called dashboard. This is the backside of uh, WordPress or any content management system, right? It looks much more complicated, maybe, but it's not so complicated. Here's where you do all kinds of settings. Um, you can create a new post, uh -huh. and you can create a new page, you can install plugins, and I go through what it is. You can change the appearance also. One thing uh, very good to know that in a system like the WordPress or any other content management system, uh, really the content and the appearance, how it looks like is uh, separated from each other, right? So you can write a lot of content. You maybe write what uh, and uh, say, um, um, yeah, no problem, Julian. Um, um you can um um write your content and then at, at any given stage you can change the appearance of it of the entire site basically so and that's what you would do in the back end right or called also dashboard and um, this is um, um one of the basics and and good to know then um, what you see here, for instance, if you go back to uh, this, this is a, a page, right? This is a more static kind of uh, content, um, uh, a form of a page and has uh, maybe more this type of URL. Um, uh, in comparison, for instance, to the, to the course news, which we have um, also on Open Network Learning. Yeah. For instance, here you have see a list of all different posts, um, and they have other uh, category or, or they are tagged uh, with the date, who has written the post, and um, they have a little featured image here and the heading, and a little what is there? Ingress is the Swedish word, but I don't like um, um, introduction text, uh, so to speak. Um, um, and if you click on one of the posts, um, you can, um, uh, you see the entire post. Uh, what you can do with posts, um, and I go back to maybe to the um, back end here to show you uh, here and on this page, uh, on this back end, uh, and we only have two posts here, but there we have categories and tags. 
we can categorize posts with one or several categories, which makes it, makes it easier later on to find all of them, right? So if um, I go back to the, to the front end here on the home page, um, uh, these are all um, posts on open network learning with the category course news. So you can filter all the posts with a specific oh. category or with a specific uh, tag. Here we have not used tags, um, but you could. Tags are more, more widely used, smaller terms, and categories are more broader um, categories. And if we have facilitators here with a lot of experience, like uh, Alistair, feel free to <laughs> fill me in if I, uh, if you uh, have an even better explanation, maybe. Um, so the functionality of the categories is that you can filter out. Um, so we can connect categories to posts and say, like, categorize each post with the PVL group, for instance with a number or from which university um, this is or which um, ONL iteration this was um, used. You can create as many categories as you want to on here on the post categories and tags and, and then you can use them as a filter, right? Oh. Clear? Yeah, reflection or ONL could be a tag. A tag is more in in WordPress context is used for smaller. Um, you would maybe have more in, in like real if you have works specifically with the difference of categories and tags, then you would tag um, a, a post with a lot of different tags. Maybe maybe more context specific. What what it is about and the category more broadly. Maybe if that makes any sense. Yeah? Um, yes, excellent. Uh, we shall create the text previous to the post. Um, oh, yes, you oh. can do that, but you can also go to, um, um, for instance, to, um, 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 to uh, you can do it early previously, but you can also do it later. You can say, for instance, here is a, go to quick edit for instance oh. and then use your different categories which you have already um and update this um and you can write here i show this demonstrate this you could um, do a quick edit here and write text this is a test this is about reflecting and this is about onl241 and uh webinar which is also a workshop mm, 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 right mm. and then you update it and then this post is tagged with those words right and these can come in hand late, mm. handy later when you have a lot of these um or want to filter i just now want to see all posts mm. which is are categorized like helpline then i click on helpline here in the back end, but I also can do this on the front end, and you will only get those posts uh, which are tagged like this or categorized like this, right? This will come in handy later um, when we have, for instance, when you have submitted your PBL groups at the end of the course, have submitted a lot of PBL group works. We categorize all of these, um, and then you um, <clears throat> oh yeah, thank you. Um, and then um, Yankin, and there's some background noise, and Bianca maybe, uh, if you can mute yourself. Um, uh, and then um, there's um, then we can filter all the PBL group work submissions, for instance, in the ONL community space for you to. Um, um, find posts more easily if we have a lot of stuff going on in the community space, for instance. All right. There, then we have front and back end content and appearance that is separated post and page um, 
category tag, plugins and themes. Um, I show you this quickly. If you, for instance, go to um, wordpress.org, this is um, the community page for WordPress. There's thousands of or millions of users, thousands of developers. They um, um, develop themes, for instance, and themes are different designs. Where, where uh, headings would be styled different, the fonts which are used are different, and have a look and feel which are, yeah, have a clear design, and you can download them for free, many of them, and install them on your WordPress page, and then um, um, use them instead, so you don't have to do a lot of design work. This is themes, and then the, you can extend your um, WordPress page with a lot of plugins, and there's now 59,833 plugins, and those are small programs which extend the uh, standard functionality of WordPress, no problems at all, um, um, with uh, speci uh, specific functionality, like an online form system for WordPress. It's not standard in WordPress, but there's plenty of uh, um, form functionalities or um, different editors or um, you can scroll down into those um, like yeah, this contact form. Um, you can then search for these um, if you want to have um, um, I don't know um, um, you want to add, add uh, your um, um, extend your functionality of your WordPress page with oh and uh, with some image gallery maybe um, and then you find dozens of extensions which provide nice um, image galleries for your WordPress page. Right. So and 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 there's a like you can extend it in a lot of different ways. There's there's those are plugins. Then the last uh, all clear so far. Yeah. Um, good. Um, then RSS feeds. Um, that's the last thing I think I wanted to show and like more of terms I had that I wanted to explain. RSS feed is, um, imagine like you maybe have some news homepage where you go and check daily um, uh, for, is there no, more news uh, update to your um, national or your newspaper of choice and you go to a homepage and check, is there a new article? Then you go there manually, you go there and check, um, is there a new article? And you do this by yourself. Think of as an RSS feed, as an assistant, which goes and checks for you and updates for you automatically if there is an, and lets you know if there is a new article, right? So a lot of the WordPress, uh, WordPress has this functionally built in and many other, um, sites as well they they allow um different um home pages or um programs talk to each other and update each other if there is a new post on a um, wordpress page right and whenever there is a new uh, wordpress post for instance here then um the the systems automatically send what is the heading is there a picture when what date was it who written it and what's the introduction line of those um heading and where's the link to the original post this is automatically sent this is an rss feed does that make sense this is one of the key concepts we're using when we say here now, and um, we you can connect your individual reflection space. Because what we do then um, is that we um, 
this a program on open network learning checks uh, all the why oh, I show it, this is where you do it um, here for instance you go to connect your individual selection space and um, once you set up your reflection space you maybe say what and uh, that you're an open learner for instance um and then you let us know where where is this um home page you want to connect in this case i'll say https um this is my blog um, I'm logged in. So my email address is already uh, written there. And then I want to say, I want my, here you, if once you connect your um, individual reflection space, you show where you want to publish your posts. When you choose fully openly on ONL and submit it here, the form, then uh, me and my colleagues will go and, and take the link to your post, connect it to um, the course homepage. And then from that on, the system checks every hour. Is there a new uh, post on your paragis.se? And if there is, we will make a copy of, to the link of the original place and um, and the article and the heading and the picture, if there was one. We will also tag it, uh, uh, categorize it with ONL 241 and um, that it was a um, connected um, post, that it's not originated from ONL homepage, if this makes sense. So once we're doing this now, um, you um, we at, at the under all in which reflection spaces uh, and I had this prepared before this is a manual process we have to do this is not automatically done when you click here submit but if you go to in the all individual um, reflections here um, there you see all posts from previous participants and previous posts all of those who said they want to share openly right so um for instance here a colleague from um um Karlstad university joan connected her space uh, reflection space and said um that she want to share her post openly then you can and then the system checks every hour if there's a new place and the last time we got something here was on from december 18th and if we click on this um, link then we go to um, uh, per reflection. And that system is possible because of RSS feeds. All right. And that makes it very easy to connect and find each other's uh, reflections so that open network learning is possible. And we give you those different options when you connect um, so that also participants who are not in a PBL group maybe can connect their reflection spaces. And um, yeah, that um, we help you um, find um, um, each other's individual reflections and you can read them and comment on each other. Okay, I stop here for a second. All clear so far? How is it? Um, I haven't checked them. Um, have you created your individual reflection space yet? Um, and have you connected it? If you want to write quickly in the chat, maybe, or unmute yourself. Yes, created. Yes, also connected. Yeah, both excellent. No link. Well, yeah, no problem. I'm just just curious. Um, so most of you have an individual reflection space, right? Then I don't need to. I I I go through the process anyway. How to do it here on the page? Um, 
why we have it is again that you have a place where you can share um, your reflections uh, with others um, and you decide in which form do you share it only with your with your institutional coordinator um, do you share it within your PBL group do you want to share it with the entire community or do you want to share it basically openly to the entire internet you decide Yes, you uh, still have to connect it, even if it's within ONL. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, so because um, we want to give you as much <laughs> room for decision making as possible, we want you to control to whom you share it with. Right? We don't know. Even there's like there's on one page uh, on one part to create a space somewhere and we want to just make it easier um, to do it um, that you don't have to go to wordpress.com or to blogger or to substack or whatever place you want to use for creating a space then we give you the opportunity for you to create um, an individual flexion space here um, easily on the page if you're locked in you can go to the link, create your individual reflection space and create it. But this is the first part. And the, the second part is then to connect it. And then we you let us know also how you want to share it. Great. Um, so here's how to do it when you have, like there might be people, colleagues watching who have uh, in the recording later, if you go to create your individual reflection space, you need to be logged in. And you find the link also from the community space. You you create a name here, um, and this is the URL. The first part is the URL part, which comes after OpenNetworkLearning.se slash whatever you type in here, and then you can give a title. Um, what you will see then later on, if you, for instance, hover over um, um, a, a tab, you will see this. Jörg is testing stuff. I go to next, and here's the part I also want to wanted to uh, go in and make you uh, um, aware of. <clears throat> For each individual reflection space here on WordPress, on but also on Blogger or on other um, sites, you can decide. I mean, it's just in a home page, right? It's like a web presence which we are recreating here, a WordPress uh, site in this instance. On WordPress sites, you can um, say um, who is allowed to see this page. And this is what you can um, uh, indicate here on this in the second step. Um, openly available, and you have two choices for this. Then everyone who goes to this link can find it or can see it, right? Um, this is um, then it's openly available to everyone. It's just like every home page you can visit. But you can also have three other choices. You can only make it available to everyone who has an account on ONL on OpenNetworkLearning.se. Right? You create an user account. All the other previous uh, um, uh, colleagues did it. All of those who have a user account can then see it if you choose visible only to registered users and uh, you can also choose um visible only to selected course participants of your choice then you can go to the back end and um say users and add certain users here right and only those users would have access to your page this is also fully possible and you decide and um and visible only to myself and administrators of the own l site is uh, then um, yeah it's the most private uh, version we can only do this rss feed integration if you choose uh, uh, the openly available if you lock your site down rss will not work this is important to know right and these settings can be changed always. You can start with a very closed space and then open up later. 
or the other way. But once we aggregated or uh, made a copy of your uh, post, of course, uh, there is a digital copy available. We cannot take it away. But you can always um, ask us to delete stuff, obviously. All right. This was connecting, maybe. Yes, um, the chat settings later, you would go, let me find the back end. In the back end, <clears throat> you would go to um, settings and um, go to reading. Um, and there you see those exactly those settings here again, right? And this is when you create it here on Open Network Learning. Um, visible only to registered users of this network. This network is opennetworklearning.se, visible only to registered users of the site. This is the ones you edit here under users and visible only to administrators of the site is only administrators of um, opennetworklearning.se, the course organizers, so to speak. Yeah, and in the back end, as I said before, you can make all kinds of changes and you are in charge. What you can also do, which I wanted to show you, with why um, WordPress is such a useful tool is and so widely used, is uh, you can go to Tools and Export um, WordPress is used by, like, as I said, a third of all web pages on the internet. And you can go just to any web uh, hotel and create a WordPress site. Or your university maybe even have a WordPress uh, uh, installation for you. Then you could go to expert here under tools, make a copy and export your content, your posts, your pages, everything you created. You get a little file which you put on, on a, a save on your computer on a USB stick. And then you go, go somewhere to another WordPress installation of your choice, wherever that is on the internet. And then you can upload this and import it. Very easy, works very smooth. So whatever you create now in WordPress here and in, in terms of the course, you can be sure then you can, this is not, this is not stored forever in Castle University's infrastructure. And this is not stored in a learning management system and you will never get your hands on it. It's your data, it's your content, and you can easily export it at the end of the course or whenever you want to and take it with you. This is the beauty of WordPress. All right. Um, is there anything else I wanted to show you? Is there anything else you wanted to know? Nicolette, from a, a facilitator perspective, is there? Yeah, something I, um, um, okay. Here's one thing I, I come, uh, I come, um, I remember now, which I don't want to forget, is when you connect here your individual reflection space uh, and come to um, this page, you say maybe you're an open learner, institutional learner. If you're an independent learner, you indicate this. We say like now this time I'm an institutional learner, then it looks a little bit different. Um, I go to the next page. Um, same stuff. I say where my address is. All right. Um, and then if you as institutional in um, participant, you would let us know which your institution is, and then we will categorize your posts with that institution. Then we can easily find all uh, institutions, the posts from all Karlsruhe University um, participants, for instance. Only if you choose fully openly on ONL, then we do this automatic process with RSS feeds. If you choose only in community space, then we know. But what you have to know is then, then you have to do it manually, sharing, taking the link, um, for instance, to 
a link from a page uh, or post here and let your participants or colleagues know, go to their own community space and put copy the link in there and say like, here's my reflection, have a read. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, how do we write a post? Um, excellent question. Thank you. Um, you go either um, here in the top menu when you're logged in, you should see here new, and then you could go to new post. And then depending on your settings, um, it looks maybe like this when you have the classic editor, or it could look a little bit different. Here's the heading. Uh, your is presenting live um, and then you write you have a visual mode this is a what you see is what you get editor or if you close text then you write just uh, ascii text but then uh, hi people uh, thank you for joining my workshop uh, and then you could choose a category here on the right hand side. This is about ONL, and this is about um, yeah, getting started, maybe, and helpline support, and about re re reflection. You can also, which is good, set a featured image. And then you go to the library and say, like, uh, OK, I'll choose this as my featured image. And then you um, can either save it as a draft and continue working on it later, or you pu publish it immediately. And uh, if you do this, then you have a then you have a post now, and we can um, see uh, this post. And you see it here. Jörg is presenting live. This was the featured image. Here's the text. Okay. Not difficult, really, once you got the hang of it. Yes, and good. If you want to erase it, then I go to dashboard, go to my posts, um, and then I trash it. And then it's trashed. Easy. If you know your way around in the back end. But learning WordPress is so powerful um, because it's used so often and more and more universities uh, use it um, for e-portfolios, pedagogical portfolios for their staff um, because it's free, it's open source, and there's a huge community. It will not go away in the next decades or so. WordPress will be around. Yes, Alexander, was there? Sorry, it's it's difficult to write it, so I, I will speak if I may. Yes, sure. uh, well, uh, you are presenting how to uh, do we create uh, um, an, uh, an individual reflection space uh, through the ONL uh, space, yes? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we have the option to do it uh, in WordPress uh, that Directly, yes, and uh, I did that, but it is a very different layout, and uh, for is is because of that that I cannot I I don't know really how to write a post there because there are a lot of options to format it, and um, yeah. I don't know if you are going to talk about it or it's better to create. A, uh, an individual uh, space uh, uh, through the ONL, and uh, it's easier. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, look, uh, you can go. I share my screen and um, show just a few resources. And um, if you go into um, um, if you go to WordPress.com and um, create um, a site there. You can you can um, do this right. Get started, and you create an account on WordPress.com, and you create an account there. Um, there, if you if you if you Google or if you go to WordPress maybe TV or just go to YouTube uh, or Google, getting started with WordPress, 
you will find uh, dozens of videos explaining this, right? There's like, it's there's so many resources. Um, but even here you find a lot of um, uh, how to videos, um, look at the, the tricks for lazy. I mean, there's like, there's, there's thousands of videos explaining um, uh, WordPress, how to get started. So like um, that, that would be my suggestion. If you use WordPress um, and, and not on um, on the on, on L site, then, then Google quickly to get in started to get the latest videos. Uh, um, there's, there's a lot there. Or use something else. But they, but they, it's of course very easy to get started with. Um, uh, on, it's probably the easiest to get started, and you, uh, we can help even better with uh, the WordPress version on OpenNetworkLearning.se. Um, but um, but in 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 principle, everything what I talked about um, front and back end, post page, category tags, that is all the same. The buttons are placed differently, and the functionality is all the same. Um, hmm? Anything else you would like me to explain or go through? Um... I think Jonathan had a good question in the chat. And after you've explained that, I have a comment. <laughs> Oh, okay. Which one? Where was I missed that? Sorry. Where do you go to see the post from the ONL page? Where do we go to see the post using the website address, or is there a link through the? Ah, oh, I missed that. Thank you. Um, okay. We um, uh, and Jonathan, uh, which post? The one I just showed, or? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, I mean, this was created in a subsite of um, the one I just showed and I erased. Uh, let me go back to uh, find this again. Um, so um, then we can also uh, see if we can, for instance, if we, that's the beauty also with WordPress, right? We can, Okay, I go back to the, here, I trash this. This is the, my trash. And then I find, okay, maybe this page was not so um, uh, bad. <laughs> After all, I restore it. And um, um, so I go back to here on the back end here, I go and um, <clears throat> find them. Um, this is now a draft, but if I... Uh, quickly edit and say it now uh, publish it and update it then you have um, I can view this and I have the URL here and this is you could just simply um, copy it and send it to you and see if you um, can see it and then we can check the settings of this page nam namely so if you now you see saw the link of the in the chat, right? What happens if you click on this link? Can you see it, or can you not see it? You can. Yeah. Yes, you can. Now I let's let, let me just demo one thing. Then if I go nam namely now to dashboard and make uh, this change the setting on who can see the uh, page. I go to reading here on the settings and say like only to um, registered users of the site and save the changes. Um, if I can ask you to refresh your page. Now it says you should get in touch with Jörg Paragis, right? Because you're not registered users of the site. Now I close this, right? We were just able to see it. And now I go back to this and change it to openly here on cha save changes. And uh, now if you do a refresh again, you see it again. 
I have the absolute power. And so do you. You are publishers on the internet. This is the beauty with publishing in Web 2.0. And we can comment on each other's places um, and um, use it for network, open network learning. And you are in the driving seat. You um, are in charge and say, who do you want to share it with? If you want to share fully openly, you can do it auto fully automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You just write your post. You write your reflection. You can save them as drafts, you can go on and edit them later, you can delete them, you can restore them, you have full control, right? And this is what this is all about, right? We want to empower you. This is what uh, learning in a digital age is about. Empowering ourselves and later our students to do all this and be contributors and producers of content knowledge and not only passive users of others' material and, and sharing in social media. And here we can have this as a place, going back to the why, where we use this as a learning diary, what we experience during a course like ONL, and sharing our thoughts, commenting on each other, and then connecting with each other, sharing it in the community space or in the PBL group space if you want to start there. But then again, then you have to do this manually, copy this URL, post it in the community space or in your PBL group space, say like, hey, people, here's what my thoughts were. Please have a read and comment. Open network learning or network learning is about taking a lot of initiative, uh, of course. But this is hopefully a give, gave you some intro to get started now technically. Again, there are no stupid questions. If something is unclear, get in touch, ask your question in the community space. And you can be sure there's others in the course who also have the same question. As you tell your students, right? If there's someone, if you have a question, there's probably someone else in the room having the same question. Be the brave one to ask. And we sort a lot of things out. Thank you so much. Can I just add add one thing? Sure. Yes. Um, I, I would like to say to everyone here that please um, post your your uh, reflections because that's one one way of learning. By you learn how to post things, you know how you learn how to um, uh, make texts and how to formulate your thoughts. But also go and comment on the others because reading other blogs or reflection spaces. You learn so much from that. It, it's a whole different dimension of your own learning to comment on other people's um, reflection spaces. And also when people start commenting on each other, it's like a snowball effect and you get comments on your posts and everything. And it, it's, it's great. Um, I still get comments on my uh, reflection space that I created when I started as a participant here in ONL and it's great fun. So out, write, and comment on each other's. Thank you, Nicolette. That's uh, that's a good uh, pep talk. Um, so um, have fun creating on the open net or on the closed net, and and don't hesitate to ask. And hopefully, see you next week with a with a webinar on openness with our special guest Mahabali. Uh, excellent session. Uh, keynote speaker, renowned expert in open education. Thank you uh, for participating actively and being here. And um, yes, have fun. <laughs>